Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna do a yard tour of our uh, main office. We do have two locations. This is gonna be our main location, our Indio office, where we're gonna just take you through, kind of show you everything, the main hub of the operation. Uh, just a reminder, our office is not open to the public, so please do not come and uh, say hello as much as we'd love you to. Uh, we just can't have anybody in here. So if you do have any comments or questions, please be sure to put that in the comments or go ahead and email us at plazatowingsocial.gmail.com. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, take you inside and show you the operation. Alright guys, so we're inside the gate now. Uh, I'm going to just kind of do an overlay of what's going on and then uh, I'll be able to kind of go into more detail of what's going on. Uh, so on the right, on this very, uh, let's call that our west wall, uh, we have our impound lineup. So this is where all the vehicles that we bring into the yard uh, basically get stored until they're either picked up or sold. Um, so this is that whole lineup and that is in order of newest arrival to oldest arrival. Um, so the cars here that you see on your right are going to be our newest uh, and then as I said on the left is our oldest until they get to the end of the lineup then they become uh, basically in our possession we can sell them. Um, moving around to the back that's where we store some of our bigger items uh, so semis and you know equipment uh, and then going further to the left is more of our equipment like our personal equipment forklifts, uh, tractors, service trucks, trailers Around the back is our shop. Uh, that's where we work on our own equipment. And then uh, we have truck storage. We go, um, the three heavy duty wreckers are parked over here. We have a wash bay, our main office, truck parking, and then more truck parking, fuel island. So uh, that's kind of a general overview. We'll go into more specifics as we move around the yard. Okay, so as we're walking along our west wall here, as I said, this is all from oldest, uh, or newest to oldest. Um, all cars that we brought in, um, you, as you'll notice, some of the cars have dates on them, or actually all the cars should at this point. Um, that indicates when the vehicle was brought in and for what agency it was brought in. And then uh, the yellow represents the sale date. So if you see any yellow markings like this truck, for example, or actually this one right here, that's fine. Um, so that indicates that this was a PPI, so private party impound, uh, brought in on July 8th, and then the sale date is August 16th. So that's when the vehicle comes into our possession and we can do whatever we want with it. Moving on, um, as you can see, we kind of have a little bit of everything. We have Rex, we have, uh, that one was a PPI, so that was a vehicle that was probably abandoned or illegally parked. Um, but yeah, we have like Rex like this, just kind of some crazy stuff. You can see all this mud. That one probably rolled over, I don't know. Eh, maybe not. But it went it went for a ride for sure. So as I was saying over here, this is kind of our long-term semi-storage. So this is where we park all of our bigger wrecks. We kind of reserve this space for um, tractor trailers and wrecks that we bring in. The reason we do that is because um, if you notice our yard layout, uh, as truck, as we come in the gate, we'll make a le uh, left, swing around, get our tractor trailer straight here, and then it's a straight Beep. shot back. So that's why we do that. Horn works. <laughs> um, this is Mr. Manny, Manny's doing yard in the quarry. I don't have boots for this little Trent. <laughs> Let me walk around. <laughs> no We're filming over here. <laughs> Okay, so this is truck 21. This is its kind of designated parking spot. Um, truck 21 is the Peterbilt that you guys have seen. Uh, pulling our Kozad trailer, our 16 tire heavy haul trailer. So this is where it parks, kind of just out of the way. We don't use it super often, but we use it enough that it needs to be accessible. So that's why it's back here. Um, and then we can come around this way. It's crazy, we just got rain. Uh, we, in the desert, we literally have like three, four days of rain. Um, and it just so happened the day that we were filming this, we just got a heavy downpour last night. So kind of interesting, it just this whole yard kind of floods up. Um, this whole area is all cars that have cleared lean. So this is where, um, as I said, everything from newest to oldest. So this is about the oldest it gets here. 
and there's uh, a couple things that'll happen here. Either the car gets sold, um, either the car gets taken to a junkyard and we get the money for that. Um, and that's basically all we do with the vehicles. Um, so this is kind of the final place that they'll rest and those two options will either happen. Okay, so here is a common example of what happens in this yard uh, when we have a vehicle that is um, in, the, in that category where it's either can be sold or taken uh, to the junkyard. Uh, this uh, is an individual here that works with us quite often and they uh, basically they'll bring their truck and trailer in, they'll buy a car from us, we'll load it up with our forklift and they'll take it to Mexico or just somewhere that they're going to sell it privately on their own. And so that's kind of a very common practice that we have in this yard where uh, people come, they buy the cars, and then they resell them um, down to Mexico. So that's pretty common, especially being that we're only an hour and a half from Mexico. Um, so let's go ahead and keep going around the yard here. All right, so coming along the south wall of our yard, uh, this is our Reaper trailer. This actually was involved in a rollover accident um, I way before my time, probably 20, 30 years ago. Uh, and as you'll see, as you'll see on the other side in a second, um, that it has rollover damage on the side, not like physical damage, but scratches and stuff like that. So you can definitely tell it was rolled over. Uh, but this went through the process of a lien and everything. And then at some point in time, this became ours because no one picked it up, no one paid the bill. Uh, and so this is what we use it for. So this is a functioning reefer trailer that we would load produce, say a truck rolls over, uh, loaded with, you know, tomatoes that were kept in a refrigerated trailer. We would transload it into a trailer if need be. Uh, and store it uh, for to keep that product fresh. Um, here we have uh, wood. You guys have seen in some of our rollover videos that we use lumber to support the sidewalls of trailers when we roll them over. So that's kind of our storage for that. Um, coming in here, Sophie, this is muddy, so careful. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this way. Uh, coming in here, this is our great all. This is a 9,000 pound forklift uh, reach fork. Uh, that we use very frequently to either lift cars here in the yard or we use it out on wrecks to, you know, transload product. Um, so this is a common piece of equipment, very versatile piece of equipment that we have in our arsenal. Um, additionally, we have a 210 uh, uh, skip loader back here that we use for um, primarily burn job cleanup. So if we have a truck and trailer that completely burns to the ground and we have a cleanup that needs to be done, basically at that point a salvage operation. Uh, we use this piece of equipment to scoop up loads of you know debris and load it into our trailers. Um, back here, this is you know just common tow yard accumulation of you know being in business for 50 years, just random rims and tires and just kind of things that might be used in the future but might not be. This truck here is our service truck. This is what we designate basically our RV service truck. So this truck uh, commonly does RV tire changes. Um, so it basically. Anything that requires a compressor um, and just bigger equipment, this will go out. So RVs, semi trucks that do have a good spare. We don't mount tires, uh, but if you do have a good spare, we will mount that onto the truck. So this is the truck that gets sent out for that. This also has the capability of running uh, electrical equipment. So uh, commonly this truck will be dispatched along with our trailer that we'll get to in a second. Um, that's our recovery trailer. So commonly these two will be paired together. We'll take them out to a wreck and that'll be kind of the support unit for all the other trucks. Um, so we can come around and take a look at some of that. Okay, so in the RV service truck, as I said, we just have basic, you know, tools that get the uh, tire change done. So we have guns as big as, you know, the one inch big gun um, for basically anything that you would ever need. We got full socket sets all the way up to the big boys. Um, so that's what's in there. And then just briefly, we have, you know, big 20 ton jacks, air jacks for jacking up uh, semis. Uh, and then in the back here, we got our compressor and jack and cones, just anything you really need to do uh, basic service. Okay, so this is our 16 ton uh, wrecker. This commonly will be used to tow small box trucks, uh, smaller RVs. Uh, it's a pretty versatile unit. It, does, it won't tow a tractor trailer down the road, but you know, a tractor from the rear, anything like that. Versatile unit, short wheelbase, so it's very easy to maneuver, get into tighter spots. That's why we have it. So this is our 16 ton. Moving on to our recovery trailer. This is our uh, heavy duty support trailer that we tow behind, like I said, our service truck. Uh, this will be commonly dispatched to uh, some of our more major wrecks where we need uh, either like a fuel pump or we need uh, extra rigging, extra straps. Uh, this is the truck that, or the trailer that will be dispatched with. So if we come around here. Okay, so like I said, in this trailer, just some basic things. We have extra straps. We have uh, fuel barrels that we can trans uh, pump. Uh, 
diesel fuel or any fluid that needed into uh, out of tanks that are leaking and into our uh, into our barrels uh, more barrels here we have a conveyor system that we can uh, what I call hand bomb uh, packages or some or boxes out of a trailer if need be if it's a hand transload um, what I'm standing on right here is extra lumber that I was talking about that we use to support uh, the sidewalls of trailers as we upright them Along this wall, we just have basic uh, hand tools, you know, shovels, um, we have uh, pick forks, um, rakes, brooms. Um, here we have a blower. This blower is used to pump up this uh, catch bag. We've actually really never used that, but we have it. Um, and just, you know, some other various things, generator, lighting, uh, saran wrap down here. So yeah, that's the recovery trailer. Okay, so this is our forklift. This is a case forklift. Uh, she's probably older than I am by 10 years, um, but she's old trustworthy. Um, what we have here is our forklift, and then this attachment is pretty interesting. This is uh, what we refer to as an eagle claw. And so what you have is a spring-loaded um, claw that essentially rips. It goes under a vehicle, and uh, as the tires hit here, it opens up and grabs the tires, and then we're able to lift. So what this attachment allows us to do is, as I was speaking over there, inventory comes in from newest to oldest. This uh, attachment moves pretty much 95% of the vehicles in this yard from uh, the right side of the wall to the left. So this is a super convenient, easy attachment that we use around the yard. It's also super uh, super easy to maneuver because you have that rear steering and it's just, you can move cars around a lot easier than a tow truck. Uh, so that's that attachment, we'll go ahead and move on. Okay, so this is our shop back here. This is where, like I said, we uh, work on our own vehicle. So this, uh, our facility, we do all in-house maintenance. Uh, so anything from oil changes, tires, um, all the way to minor engine repair, uh, we'll do. Otherwise, we'll sub it out to someone. But for the most part, we try to handle everything in-house. So let's go ahead and head in, and I'll show you guys what we got. Okay, so as you guys come in, this is our main bay door. This is where we primarily do everything. This, uh, we have oil, we have 15W40. That's where we, uh, we order all our oil in bulk. Um, we got air. This is our oil uh, filler. Uh, we have a lift, so this is what we use for lifting up cars, inspecting them, doing oil changes, whatever we gotta do. Uh, this is basically anything you'd see in a shop. We have the community toolbox. All our mechanics have their own personal toolbox in the back, but that's kind of the community box. Um, tire mounting machine for smaller tires, fridge full of water. We have all extra rigging and just kind of things we've accumulated over the years that we might need right here. Um, and the same with the back two storerooms, it's just all extra rigging, extra straps, winch cables, anything we need that could uh, break or be, need to be replaced. All right, so this is truck 24. This is our Miller Industries 35 ton. You guys have seen plenty of this. This is where it parks. Uh, and then just around it's just very, we have got coolant here, um, old tires, just kind of various stuff. But this is where that truck parks. If you follow us this way, uh, this is our main dumpster. That's where we put all our trash. Uh, in here, this is our uh, battery room. Oh, it's open, okay. This is our main battery room. Uh, we do quite a bit of battery installs. Uh, so this is all new inventory that uh, is set to get on our trucks when, when needed. Uh, and then this all here is old inventory that they pick up. So this is all old bad batteries that we pulled out uh, and the battery company will pick up. Uh, back here we have all our tire inventory. So this is where we keep our stock room of tires. Uh, we got everything from 24 fives for the big trucks all the way down to so we got 22 fives back here, 17 fives, 19 fives. We got them all back here. All right, so here is where we parked the two other trucks. Uh, on my on my left, we have truck 25. This is our 35 ton Jirdan uh, with the Pete 567 chassis. Uh, so that is primarily the Darl's truck. You guys have seen plenty of that. And then here's the baby, uh, our 50 ton rotator. This is our Miller Industries uh, Vulcan 950 rotator. Um, so this is where these two truck parks and all their glory. Uh, so yeah, this is, these are these two trucks. You guys have seen plenty of these. I don't really have to go into much detail about them. I think you guys have seen them. If you haven't, check out our other video. All right guys, so we, that's where the rotator and the 35 ton parks. Now we're gonna take you out to the middle of the yard where the majority of the trucks are parked. These are where we 
where the majority of the light duty trucks are going to park to all the flatbeds. Uh, we do have our 12 ton unit here. This is like a small medium duty for like service trucks, F-350s, um, some of those kind of things. Pretty versatile unit. It's also a good recovery unit for cars because it has uh, 200 feet of cable on it as well. So if we have a car out off the road um, longer than 75 feet, then this is the truck that would be sent out to recover it. We have a flatbed here. Uh, what truck is this? Truck seven, I think. This is truck seven. Uh, this is truck's, truck five's parking spot. Truck two parking spot. Truck four parking spot, which is here. Uh, and then truck six parking spot, which is not here. So these are where all the flatbeds park. All right, guys, so this is our fuel cell that we have. Uh, we carry 2,000 gallons of diesel on site for all the trucks. So that is that. And then we got the uh, pump and hose. So that's super convenient. We never really have to go to a fuel station unless we're like in Phoenix or something like that. We might need to get fuel uh, on the way back. Speaking of that, Tommy uh, in the Blue Pete is out doing that right now. He's on his way back to Phoenix. So uh, he didn't need to make fuel stop on the way back. Uh, we also carry totes of DEF fluid, so uh, that's super convenient. And then we have a, I think this is a 100 gallon fuel cell of um, just uh, de uh, gasoline for um, filling up our fuel canisters uh, for service calls for people who run out of fuel on the side of the road. Um, moving on, nothing really here. Um, we can move on to our landals. So currently two of the Landalls are out and about. We got the Kenworth, which is missing right now, that usually parks here. Uh, Kenworth is usually hooked up to our three axle trailer, three axle Landall. Uh, so that's out towing a bus right now. We have the Freightliner Cascadia with the two axle black Landall. Uh, th that's here. And then we have the white Peterbilt with the white two axle Landall. That is here. And then missing here that normally parks here is going to be our blue Peterbilt, the Peterbilt 579 uh, paired with the blue two axle land. All that is picking up a water truck in Phoenix coming back here. So right there as we were speaking earlier what Manny's doing is he's just moving cars from as they are brought in to older. So that car was probably brought in a week or two ago so it's being shifted over uh, further south in our yard until it gets to the end of the lineup. Um, Something that I forgot to mention was that, you know, customers are, or the, I guess the registered owner of the vehicle is uh, responsible for picking up the vehicle. So if they pick it up, uh, then it gets pulled out of the lineup, obviously, and they get to take it home. Uh, but the scenario that I'm speaking of is if the owner does not pick up the vehicle, it makes its way all the way to the end of the lineup until it gets sold. So that's what Manny's doing right now. He's just moving into the that truck that he's using is what we refer to as Mini Me. That's kind of his nickname. It's, as you can see, it's a cab over uh, Chevy chassis. And it's just super nimble, super easy to move around. We don't use it other than outside of this yard. Um, but it's, it's a very good yard, uh, I guess, yard go for better term. Yes, sir. All right, so as we move down, uh, this is what we refer to as the Eagle Claw. It's got a exact same attachment as what you guys saw in the forklift. Another super versatile truck. We primarily use that truck and Mini Me, as you guys just saw, uh, for, like I said, in the yard or festival work. We use, uh, we do all the towing for the Coachella Valley Music Festival. These trucks get in and out of the little tight corners that uh, we need to maneuver through very easily. So that's why we keep those around. Uh, everything here is basically employee parking, so this is where all the employees park their vehicles. This is our Ford Ranger. This was uh, used to be a battery truck, a battery service truck. We retired it from that use. We now use uh, Ford F-150s for that use. It's just more carrying capacity and uh, you know better driver accessibility. Um, now this unit is basically our shop truck uh, that goes and makes part runs and it's just an easy truck to go get parts with. This Ford F-150 is going to be one of four of our battery units. Uh, these trucks, we probably haven't gone into much detail about it. I'm sure it's locked. 
Uh, that's open. Uh, these trucks carry full stock of batteries, uh, fuel, and basically everything you need to do road calls, tire changes, everything like that. But their primary use is uh, installing or testing and removing the old battery if needed and then installing a new battery. So they are fully stocked with pretty much every battery that uh, they offer. Uh, with the exception of a few, um, but we have four units that are dedicated to that. Three of them are out, one of them's here. Um, yeah, this is our main office. This is where all dispatch and billing and everything is managed out of. So we can go ahead and take a quick look in there. I'm not going to really talk much about it because they're busy in there, but we'll get a few shots of what's going on inside the dispatch room. Okay, so on in very simple terms, what we have going on is two dispatchers at all times during the day, uh, and basically they're handling AAA calls. They're also ha uh, handling our account calls and COD calls. Um, they got most of the time two computer screens going, and the radios, and it's just super hectic in here. So they're all handling multiple calls. So we typically handle anywhere from 150 to 200 calls a day. Uh, and as you can see, it's super hectic. They're just always doing something. So we're gonna let them be, but that's what's going on here. Well, lastly, this is our wash bay we are like super blessed i guess to have a wash bay because we are constantly washing our trucks matter of fact like i said it just rains so all these trucks are going to get washed throughout the next day or two uh, but basically super simple uh, either trucks are going to get washed here or a lot of times what happens is the trucks get backed into here um, and say you had a wreck and there's oil all over the place uh, they'll get backed up to right here there's an oil trap right here and uh, the beds will be cleaned off and you know everything will be properly disposed of other than that, trucks are in here to get washed. We got soap over there. We got a power washer with power washer hose reel, hose, sink, brushes, you know, everything, vacuum, everything you can need to make sure the trucks are nice and clean. Um, this is our dump trailer. This dump trailer is used for, um, like I said, burn jobs. We'll load uh, burnt material into here and properly dispose of that at the dump. And then this is truck 11, one of our wheel lifts. We have uh, two Dodge wheel lifts that you guys have seen, truck 11 and truck one. Um, so yeah, that is our fleet. All right guys, well hopefully you did enjoy that video of the yard tour of the whole yard. Uh, if you guys do have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please be sure to either email us or write down in the comments what you thought, what any questions that you have about the yard that I can go into further detail. If you have any questions about the process of how we do things around here, um, again, a reminder, please do not show up at the yard uh, asking to see me. It's happened a lot more frequently, so um, as, we, as much as we appreciate it, uh, we do have to keep this lot secured and private. Um, so anyway, with that being said, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thanks for checking out my crib, and we'll see you on the next one.